Bienvenidos, welcome. I'm Nidal Foodie. Today I'm going to be cooking Chuck Wagon Competition Dutch Oven Potatoes. Uh, basically in the uh, Chuck Wagon competitions, milk and cheese is not allowed. Uh, because back in the days of the cattle drives, they didn't take milk or cheese on the cattle drives. So basically, potatoes, peppers, onions, uh, with a secret ingredient and some spices going into this. It's very easy to do uh, and has a very unique flavor. So stick around and uh, let's get cooking. So basically, five Idaho Burbank russet potatoes and onion. I couldn't find poblano peppers, so we're gonna use pasillos, pasillas peppers, one red pepper, and pound of bacon, and the secret ingredient is some Sprite or Shasta Twist, which is our knockoff. We can get away with doing this because we can call it a seasoning. Seasonings can be wet or dry. Spices are usually dried from plants, but the rules don't say we can't use this because we'll call it a seasoning, a wet seasoning. Very unique, uh, tastes great, does win some competitions. So anyway, I'll get the, the uh, Potatoes peeled and sliced, and uh, we'll get going. Uh, we need to put a char on these pasillas. And I did throw some mesquite chunks in there on the coals to kind of add to the flavor a little bit. So we'll get a char on these, then I'll put them in a bag and let them sweat for a minute so we can scrape that off a little bit. And uh, then we'll get to the potatoes and uh, after that we can put it all together. So we found a hot spot here on the griddle. This Lodge Sportsman's Grill. Starting to get a char on those. Don't have, doesn't have to be perfect. This just adds a little bit more flavor, especially with the mesquite wood. So a couple more minutes on that. Then we'll be ready to uh, heat up the Dutch oven and cook the bacon and put the sliced potatoes and put it all together. So we'll pretty much call those good. Put them in a Ziploc bag or like they call them in uh, Australia, zippies. Just kind of let them steam a little bit. Okay, now next up, we'll swap this out uh, for the Dutch oven and we'll get the bacon started. So traditionally, Dutch ovens are one pot meals. Everything goes in the pot, cooks in the pot, no secondary pot adding to it, traditionally. I was going to put a whole pound of bacon in this, but decided I wanted to save half of it for breakfast in the morning. So I'm going to take a half a pound of bacon, cut into strips, or little squares. And I have coals heating up. And the other benefit to this, cooking the bacon into the pan like this also helps season, season the Dutch oven. But I will pull out some of the bacon and put it through the layers of potatoes and onions and peppers. So we'll be back in a couple minutes uh, when the bacon gets done.
So the bacon's done. I'm going to go ahead and fish that out. Drain out some of the bacon grease out of the bottom, not all. Looks like there's probably two or three tablespoons. Yeah, I'll probably leave one in there. I'll get situated up and uh, move this hot box out of the way. Get the onion sliced, potato sliced, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, and if you want more onion or less onion, you can make the call on that. The biggest important, the most important part is the pieces are roughly the close to the same size, unless you like some crunchy and some not crunchy. I like onions, so however they are is fine with me. Got a rough chop on them. Cut them on a diagonally if you'd like, flashback from the 80s. No runaways. Hey. Get these bowled up and then we'll get the uh, potatoes ready to go. Almost forgot. Need to give these a scrape. I'd have been upset if I'd have put all this together and forgot to. And you don't have to get all this. I'm not even sure if it's even that important to get any of it, but. There's a little bit of the tougher layer of the skin.
don't usually do the knife work on camera for fear I cut my finger off and catch catch it on camera. Okay, that's the last of the peppers. Next is potatoes and we'll be able to put this all together, finally. I'm getting hungry. These thing with potatoes, especially in the Dutch oven, fairly equal thickness slices. So that way when they're done, they're all done about a quarter of an inch. Because probably my biggest critique on people's Dutch oven potatoes is there's some way overdone and some not done at all. So I'll get these sliced up and we're about ready to go. Okay, so I have about uh, one tablespoon or so of bacon grease on the bottom. I'm going to start layering in the potatoes. It doesn't have to be perfect. And your choice salt and pepper. I'm going to use uh, Lowry seasoned salt. But if you just add salt and pepper, that works great. Do a layer of onions. And however you want to do it, make it colorful. Put the red, put some of the green in there. And with Dutch ovens, how much they hold, to how many potatoes, to how many ingredients. Takes a little practice, but either way it's good. No one's going to go, oh, you should add more of this or that and the other in there. And around here, Dutch oven cooking, people automatically think it's going to be good because it is in a Dutch oven. So you always get that going for you. Oh man, I've been forgetting the bacon. Well, we'll make that a dressing on top. That way the bacon doesn't get soggy on the bottom. Well, that's a pretty good guess for as many potatoes to the size of the Dutch oven. So, I'm going to call that good there. Now, here's the secret ingredient. You call this a seasoning, not a ingredient. Seasonings can be wet or dry, so this will be a wet seasoning. You can't use milk or cheese in the uh, chuck wagon competitions but you can use this because you call it a seasoning not an ingredient it's the way around the rules this will add a little bit of sweetness brightness to it 
Not gonna add the whole thing, maybe half. Not even half, it's 24, 23 ounces. Six, eight ounces in there, tops. I don't want to pour it down the center and wash all my seasoning to the bottom. So now I'm going to get the coals up. I'm going to put eight coals on the bottom, 16, 18 on the top. I want 400 degrees for 30, 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, 18 coals on the top, eight on the bottom. So I'll get that set up and uh, be back in a second. So I have eight coals for the bottom. Come along there and situate that. None in the center, all around the perimeter as close as you can get them. So start the timer, looking for about 40 minutes, I'll come out in 20 minutes, rotate the lid 180, rotate the pot 180, uh, so that way you even out any hot spots. So we're just about there, 40 minutes, it'll be supper time. So we'll see you back in a bit. Remember, if you're looking, you're not cooking, then you can smell the onions coming out of this. You actually see it poofing a little bit of steam there. This has been close. I come out after about 20, 25 minutes, rotated the lid 180, rotated the entire pot 180. Did add a few more coals to the top and a couple to the bottom, north, south, east, and west. So let's pop the top and take a look. When they break with the fork, which are getting real close. So I'm going to put the lid back on that, give it another 10-15 minutes. Hopefully we'll have enough daylight, but it smells good. So, back in a second. Well, we're about out of daylight here. Sure smells good. Well, let's pop the top, see what it looks like. Boy, you can sure smell the uh, mesquite coming out of those casilla chilies. Well, what the heck.
The strongest flavor coming out of that is the mesquite off those pasillas. I didn't realize they were as hot as they were. Where they are. Man, if you can, definitely recommend <clears throat> charring those uh, chilies, those peppers, with mesquite if you can. It actually brings a lot to the table. So, anyway, here you go. Chuck Wagon Competition Dutch Oven Potatoes, cooked in a Dutch oven. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers. Uh, if you like this content, give me a thumbs up. And if you feel inspired to, subscribe. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'm going to go eat. We're losing daylight. Talk to you later.